Good morning, everyone. I'm very excited to be here today to present our work entitled Meta Review Reinforcement Learning Based Meta Learning from Learning Curves. My name is Meng Hung Nguyen, and my co authors are Nothong Gristong, Isabel Guyong, and Li Sheng San Ho there. In this work, we address a cornerstone of automated machine learning the problem of rapidly uncovering which machine learning algorithm performs best on a new dataset. Our method belongs to the family of zero level meta learning, which means learning only from model evaluation. In first level and second level meta learning, uh, more information of dataset and model will be taken into account. Our work is motivated by some existing work, including the idea of active meta learning in active meta reinforcement learning based meta learning in review and learning from learning curves in free tours. So let's see what are the limitations of these methods and how arrows show this um, limitation in an example. In this figure one, we show a setting of meta learning with algorithm are in columns, data sets are in rows and learning curves of algorithm on the data set. Given a new data set, the goal here is to find the best performing algorithm for the data set as fast as possible. Previous work suggests active meta performs multiple matrix factorizations using the entire performing matrix, which is computationally demanding. Review instead learns a policy and performs faster in test time. However, both active meta and reveal requires final performance score of fully trained models, and they do not leverage learning curve information. Free thought, a method which inspires us to use learning curve information relies on heuristic policy, and it is not trainable for meta learning. Our new method trains a reinforcement learning agents on past learning curves. Given a new data set, the agent leverage partially trained model along with their learning curves to make decision on which algorithms should be trained and tested progressively. By using pre-trained policy, the agent gains advantage in test time in terms of computational time. So from the limitation of some existing work we just seen, our objective here is to meta learn a not hard-coded policy that rapidly uncover the best performing algorithm on a new data set. We first propose IR-based meta learning from learning curves. Second, we implemented and evaluated various reinforcement learning agents and baseline methods on some meta data set. Lastly, we propose a switching frequency metric to measure how often an agent switches between learning curves. In the next three slides, we are going to into the the detail of, of our method, which is called meta review. Since our method is based on reinforcement learning, which refers to learning by trial and error, we introduce a meta learning environment by defining its key components. First, a state contains information of current learning curve of algorithm on the data set at hand. It consists of two vectors representing the time has been spent for each algorithm and the current test accuracy scores. Second, an action is to choose the next algorithm to be trained and tested in a fixed amount of time. In an episode, an agent works on one data set at a time within a given time budget, big T. Based on two real life scenario, we introduced two learning settings called fixed time learning and any time learning. We explain the, the difference between these settings by an example in figure three. Here we can see two learning curves of two algorithms competing in the same data set within 180 seconds. The y-axis shows the test accuracy score. In fixed time learning, algorithms are evaluated by the final performance. In this case, algorithm B, which is in blue, is the winner. In contrast, in any time learning, algorithm may be interrupted and evaluated at any point in time, which means we favor algorithm that perform well earlier. In any time learning setting, we use the area under the learning curve metric to compare algorithm. Therefore, algorithm A 
which is in green, clearly outperform algorithm B, which is in blue. If they were to stop at any time, algorithm A would most likely achieve better performance than algorithm B. What we've seen in this slide is X setting requires a different strategy of searching and time management. Therefore, we specifically design a reward function for X setting to guide the agent to learn successful strategies. In reinforcement learning rewards, I use a feedback from the environment to an agent for improving its policy. In fixed time learning, the reward at time t is defined as the performance improvement compared to the previous time step. As a consequence, the cumulative reward at the end of the episode is equal to the best performance found within big T. In any time learning setting, the only difference is the weight defined by one minus t till weight t till is the normalized time on log scale. We use this way to adjust how important to find a good solution at the beginning. The cumulative reward at the end of the episode is equal to the area under the learning curve within Big T. So far, we have seen two learning settings and their component. In the next few slides, we are going to discuss our experiment in which we run some IO agents and some baseline methods on both reward and synthetic metadata sets. So by metadata set, we are referring to learning curves of a set of algorithms on a set of data sets. The first metadata set we use contain learning curves of 13 algorithms on 66 data set from the auto deep learning challenge. This algorithm was submitted by the participants in the challenge. Figure four shows an example of the learning curves on one data set. As we can see, some algorithms may be better in a fixed time learning setting, while others may outperform in an anytime learning setting. The second metadata set contains artificial learning curves of 20 algorithms on 100 data set. Each of them is a sigmoid function with its parameters are generated from matrix factorizations. This allows us to experiment with various learning curves. In the next slide, we discuss about the choice of RL agents and baseline methods. So we choose a diverse group of agents, including three IL agents and four baseline methods. Double deep Q network, soft actor critic, proximal policy optimization are among the state-of-the-art methods in reinforcement learning. They were chosen based on the diversity of their strategies. We compare IO agent to some baseline. The first one is the free thought Bayesian optimization method, which is based on the prediction of learning curve asymptotes. The second baseline is simply select the algorithm that perform best based on the average rank of all algorithms obtained from the training phase. The third baseline is the best ensemble, which tries each algorithm in a fixed amount of time first and then select the one that perform best to run with the remaining time budget. The last baseline is the random search, which randomly selects an algorithm to be trained and tested. We run it five times and take the average to, re to reduce the variance. In the next slide, we are going to compare this method into metadata set we have seen before into learning setting, fixed time learning and any time learning. In figure five, we show the average accumulated reward obtained by each agent computed using k full cost validations with k equal to four. On the auto DL metadata set on the left and the artificial metadata set on the right. We want to remind that the accumulated reward in this fixed time learning setting is equal to the best performance file within the given time budget. The bars in blue belong to the IL agents and the one in gray and orange belong to the baseline. The arrow bar show the standard deviation computed over the test rules. We highlight the bar of random search in gray to stress that it is an average over five random runs. Its total variability is higher than shown by the four arrow bars here. 
So the first observation from both metadata sets is that the winners is the reinforcement learning agents. In the Autodia metadata set, it is clear that all IL agents achieve higher community rewards than the baseline. The best ensemble performed worse, indicating that in this metadata set, algorithms that perform well at the beginning might not have the highest accuracy score at the end of the episode. In the artificial metadata set, there was no significant difference between all agents. Within the given time budget, all agents managed to find a good algorithm at the end. Now we see the result on the anytime learning setting. The accumulated reward in this setting is equal to the area under the learning curve of the agents within the given time budgets. Again, IL agents are in blue and baseline are in orange and gray. The first thing to notice is IL agents obtain the highest community reward in both data sets. This means that IL agents manage to meta learn from training data sets and know where to start. At the beginning of an episode, IL agents try algorithms which perform well on past data set and stick to them to climb the learning curve fast and then start exploring. In contrast, the policy of best on sample and free thorn forces them to try each algorithm at least once at the beginning. If they manage to find the best algorithm, this should happen near the end of the episode. We makes it less valuable in the anytime learning setting. This explains why they perform poorly in both metadata sets. In general, we've seen that policy, policy learned by IO agents are more beneficial in the anytime learning setting than in the fixed time learning setting. In anytime learning, the hyperparameter T0 control how important the performance improvement at the beginning of an episode is. So we tune this hyperparameter to see how the agent performance change. Figure seven shows how the average accumulated reward change when T0 varies in both metadata set, auto DR and artificial. The X axis show the value of T0 in log scale and the Y axis show the average accumulated reward. The blue line show the average of IO agents while the orange line is the average of baseline. What we can observe is IO agent consistently outperform the baseline methods and the performance difference between them increase as T0 increase, which is more obvious in the artificial metadata set. This results indicate that IO agents can react and adapt their strategy to outperform baseline methods. In this slide, we're going to discuss our last experiment on the correlation between switching frequency and accumulated reward. The question is, does switching between learning curves more often help agents to obtain higher rewards or not? Switching frequency is defined as the numbers of time an agent switches from training an algorithm to another one, divided by the total number of actions in an episode. Figure 8 shows the correlation between average switching frequency and average accumulated reward in two metadata sets and two learning styles. The result on the AutoDL metadata set are on the left and the result on the artificial metadata set on the right. Again, IL agents are in blue and the baseline are in orange. The common pattern we found in these figures is IL agents are among the algorithm with the lowest switching frequency. This can explain their success in the anytime learning setting as they favor more exploitation than exploration at the beginning of an episode. So we conclude our presentation by some remarks on our work and potential future work. To the best of our knowledge, our work is the first that trains a reinforcement learning agent to meta learn from the learning curve. We experimentally show that IO agent can meta learn and outperform some baseline methods. And the potential of IO methods were best demonstrated in the anytime learning setting. 
The future works include uh, performing more experiments on real-world and artificial metadata set, extending our method to the first level, second level, and the 2D meta, level, 2D meta learning settings. We would like to also propose IR methods that are more dedicated to the proposed settings. So if you are interested in our work, please check out our GitHub repository. Thank you all for the attentions.